This is iPhone 10, and while it doesn't say X anywhere on the front of the box, uh, people are pretty much always going to call this one the X. I've just accepted that. So this is your first look at the unboxing experience, and spoiler, it's pretty much exactly the same as iPhone 8 was, and almost every other iPhone. Headphones, adapters, stickers, it's all in the box, but I guess it's a good thing there's no surprises here. And so you can see right here off the bat, it's a really shiny, chromey, reflective phone. Uh, this is the silver one, and you can see how shiny the sides are. The space gray one, though, is a bit more toned down. And so the only thing that was actually new during the setup of iPhone 10 is now you set up Face ID during first boot instead of the fingerprint Touch ID. But yeah, this is brand new and it's been a couple weeks since we last saw this phone at that Apple event. So seeing it again for the second time is kind of a reminder of all the things that are new about this thing. Obviously the biggest difference is the display up front, the 5.8 inch OLED corner to corner screen that fits in a footprint smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus, which has a smaller screen. So naturally pretty much all the focus is going to be on that and the notch at the top and how apps handle it, etc. And I can tell you that aside from all the incompatible apps I've come across that are going to have to get updated, my experience with the display panel itself have been pretty decent so far. It's bright, it's contrasty, well calibrated, definitely not oversaturated like some OLEDs can be. And just handling and playing with this phone in the studio here for the first time, it's answered some immediate questions that I had about it from the last video. So first of all, since there's no home button, obviously you have that swipe up gesture to go home, but we were wondering how do you take a screenshot? That is power and volume up. So that's the new screenshot combo for iPhone 10. And then since holding the power button now goes to Siri, how do you turn the phone off? Well, it's gonna be long pressing the power button and volume up key. And that'll get you to see that power off menu. So those are two new key combos to memorize there. And then of course I was reminded of how many gestures there are now to memorize. Obviously when you get rid of a button, there's a whole bunch of swiping and gestures to replace it. So there's a multitasking and app switching motions, which are pretty similar, but both kind of useful in their own way. Uh, depending on how you use the phone really. That's on top of the screenshot and power off combos, plus long holding the power button for Siri and double pressing it for Apple Pay. But basically there's a lot going on and if you're gonna make a phone that's all screen, obviously you have to be able to do it all without a lot of buttons. Anyway, one of the biggest differences between iPhone 8 and iPhone 10 is the new front facing camera suite up at the top in that notch. The IR blaster, the depth sensor, etc. And all that enables a couple of new things with this phone. Number one is obviously Face ID. Uh, the setup like you saw was pretty quick and painless and it's been working pretty well since then for unlocking my phone. Now I've only really had this phone for a day like the rest of press, but so far in this time, it's been fine and it works as advertised as far as being smart and not easily spoofed. You can see the little lock under the time when the phone is locked. And basically instead of placing your fingerprint, the phone will not unlock until you look at the phone like you did during the setup process. And then once you do, it's pretty quick to unlock. You can see the little thing open and then you can swipe up to open your phone. And sure enough, it doesn't work with a picture of you. It doesn't work when you're looking away. It doesn't work when your eyes are closed. It just basically waits until it sees what it saw during that setup process and then it's good to go. So no, your, your girl can't unlock your phone while you're asleep with your eyes closed for those of you who are wondering that. I do have some further thoughts on this Face ID versus Touch ID though, so stay tuned for that in an upcoming video. And I do wanna see if I can fool it with identical twins maybe, just out of curiosity. Anyway, with the new notch, you also get a new front facing camera complete with selfie portrait mode. Messing around with it, it seems pretty average. Uh, interestingly enough, that Pixel 2 that I've been testing seemed way more like confident with the front facing camera portraits than the iPhone 10. Now there's no doubt both of these will get better with time and software updates, but just from turning on portrait mode, switching the front facing camera and snapping a picture, these are the types of results you're gonna get. Um, there's a pretty big difference between the two if you ask me, especially if you're looking at edges and hair and things like that. Uh, and sometimes the iPhone just didn't wanna blur the background at all, just got really picky about the lighting. But that's something, again, we'll be testing a lot more for the full review of this phone. Oh yeah, and the new front facing camera suite will get you and emojis. So yeah, you can see in these animojis, the physics of things moving around is actually pretty on point. Uh, so if you're into it, you can, you can map your face to a cartoon animal head and send it to someone in iMessage. But you still can't edit tweets though. So overall, there's a lot to test with the iPhone 10 now that I have it in my hands finally. As a matter of fact, definitely leave your thoughts right below that like button with things you wanna see in the full review. Most likely things like battery life, camera quality, uh, app performance, all that good stuff, but don't let me miss anything. 
But until then, definitely get subscribed for the upcoming videos on the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.